I'm rolling. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. As you can guess, well, as you probably can't guess, I am at the Two Thin Coats Paint Factory plant bottling place. And it may not look like much, but it is. In these boxes to my right, I can only assume, I can only know for a fact that these are Duncan Rose's paints himself. He's packed these himself by hand. No, I can't say that. Though. <laughs> So, we have been invited over to the Two Thin Coats Mixing, Bottling and Distribution Centre here at Transatlantis Games in Bootle. To find out everything we can about how acrylic paint gets made, how this little company recruited the best of the best and also weirdly built the best of the best to bring this product to your painting table. But first of all, we need to pay a quick visit to Duncan's Kitchen where the raw materials for the paint are assembled. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know what mysticism goes into this, but I can tell you the basics give or take actual accuracy. Firstly, a decision was made between TAG and Duncan about the choice of binder to use. A binder essentially decides how a dry pigment is crushed up and distributed. In this case, it's acrylic. The carrier is then chosen. In this case, it's a water-based medium. Before any colors were even developed, the process of choosing these base materials was scrutinized and field tested and refined. Assessing and tweaking the composition to taste. Does it cover? Does it dilute? Does it maintain pigment during these stages? Only once the base is deemed satisfactory, do the development of colors actually go ahead. In certain cases, like with yellows and oranges, they were given fairly unique compositions to cater for the colors, typically weak pigment density across most paint lines, to be fair. Once all chemical compositions are satisfactory, mass production can actually begin. If you're wondering why I haven't gone into any more specifics than that, it's because this process is actually massively confidential. I was lucky to even get this footage of the actual paints in the actual factory being made. Okay, now that our Patax Coma source has made its way to our location, we can get stuck in to see what work still needs to be done to get this paint out into the world and to your paint station. Firstly, it's mixed within an inch of its life, almost pulverized. This is to make sure that all our paint elements are added in universal proportions to every bottle. So pigment, binder, medium all need to maintain their manufacturing ratios to function. And it's mixed some more, probably for about 12 hours for good measure. I know there'll be a few keyboard chemists rearing up to have a cry wank over this being done with hand tools on open air and whatever, but hey, if it works, it absolutely works. And you can show us how it's done with your paint company. So yeah, pretty much everywhere I go in this place, I'm surrounded entirely by paints. Like, I don't think I've seen this much paint since I decorated my bedroom, which I wasn't supposed to do, but we ran out of money, so I did that. And yeah, no shit, there's paint everywhere. But what makes this actually so impressive is that a team of six persons, all interchanging their job roles, managed to get this many bottles of paint done by hand-operated machines in a short amount of time. And we'll find out how they do this after this. What's up guys, Tony Tool Coach here, back in perpetual spin in motion. And I'm here to deliver to you a paint by number special message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. <laughs> Ever thought your website could use a new look of paint? Well, let me stop you right there, baby. All you're gonna need is Squarespace. With award-winning quick start templates, Squarespace has an expansive palette of stuff for you to get started on the website of your dreams. Please don't push off this opportunity, guys, because Squarespace also features an inbuilt storefront interface for you to list 
and make sales online and even integrate that storefront with your own brick and mortar store's existing EPOS system. All right, guys. What's it is? Not enough for you? Well, Squarespace's built-in domain acquisition tab allows you to easily pick the domain name of your choice, attach it to your freshly painted website, and be ready to welcome visitors in minutes. So come on down to the Squarespace website emporium, where we've got squares and spaces by the website for. So when the two thin coats Kickstarter went a little bit more successfully than expected, production speeds needed to ramp up. And with industrial mixing and bottling machines costing actual millions of pounds, the team at Transatlantis Games needed to step up and figure out the problem for themselves. Introducing the Skullmaster 2000, a fully handmade bottling, descrambling, and agitator inserting thing. Let's meet the man who put this machine together to find out more. So, you built some of the machines in this magic chocolate factory thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's made of scrap wood. Made of scrap wood. And a few bits from uh, eBay. What did you do before this? Do all sorts of things. Started off making garden gnomes. And, yeah, it's, it's all self-taught and probably highly illegal, but... Potentially, but there's self-taught and then there's that thing. Yeah. Which is... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like every issue that you might have had, you've thought, ah, just, just fix that now while no one's looking. There you go. Now the bottles actually flip themselves. I got most of the ideas are on, on YouTube. Okay. It's called a bottle unscrambler, apparently. Okay. The bit that lifts the bottles up, that's made from a, a treadmill that found in a skip. Right. Yeah. There's just a, like a clockmaker's workshop magic to it, almost. Like, we can see it happening, but we're not entirely sure how it's happening. <laughs> but it's just going really well. We've seen, okay. like, pharmaceutical machines doing the same thing yeah that probably cost millions the difference is that those have got a chassis on and they're white that cost 50 quid a pack of the crisps 50 quid and a pack of yeah. flavor crisps uh not prawn cocktail not anything but prawn cocktail. that's a completely acceptable answer we didn't know what we were doing at first yeah, yeah. Uh, we were doing several a day and the, the, the kickstarter went really surprisingly well apparently so too well yeah <laughs> and, uh, everything was been done by hand they screw the caps on by hand and after about 400 you get another yeah, step yeah. i mean that that machine over there does one a second yeah yeah um, it took about well, three people six minutes to do one tray wow it takes just yeah. over a minute so it's kind of like i suppose things grew so fast yeah and, you know uh, and, and adapting to that was kind of like the thing you all had to do yeah was literally build machines that could do it yeah, thing. yeah. sort of but one out of panic more than uh, panic, yeah. But, you know, stress is a, a motivator sometimes. Yeah, it's sometimes a good motivator. Yeah. And then I built the the bottle cappers, and then decided that the thing then slowing everything down was the um, putting the agitators in the bottles. So then you built the Skullmaster 2000. Yeah, yes. it's called Skullmaster because in, initially there were there were little pewter skulls that were cast, but now we're using uh, stainless steel wool berries and so. Nice. Yeah. But the machine worked exactly the same. Yeah, it didn't need any adaptation at all. So once the bottles are unscrambled and sufficiently agitated, they need paint, obviously. Probably should put that in, shouldn't we? So we head over to the paint pumps where a pump, apparently one of them is older than me, feeds the mixed paints into the bottles. While it may seem odd that all of this is being done by hand machines, these guys apparently work as fast as any air quote reasonably priced automated machine will do it. The paint bottles then work their way to the next station for capping. As our friend Guy told us, after hand screwing about 400 of these bottles in a day, it's a one-way trip to finger bliss the city. 
so they made even more machines to speed the job up and make it less painful, literally. First port of call is the bottle capper, a simple pull-down lever that lines the bottle up and a hand-pulled punch presses the cap into place. And immediately next to it is a Dremel tool, which is rigged up to a lever to lower and twist and automate the machine on. Again, all handmade stuff, guys. The ingenuity at work here is something I didn't expect to find. Problems and challenges arose and the team used their skills to think and build their way to better solutions. Idiot-proof solutions too, as we are about to see. Position it so it locks into there. Yeah. Then with the other hand, just press down. That V-shape has lined it up. So keep pressing it down to meet resistance. Yeah. And yeah. All good. That's that bit done. We keep going until it starts spinning. Yeah. Yep. Bam. Oh, that is good. Yeah. That's satisfying. Go home. I'll, I'll carry on here, guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got a few more for you to do. Well. Oh, freaking. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, I'm going to pour another like, half bucket or something. <laughs> so. Donk a donk. Yep. Meat resistance. Cap. cap. Yeah, 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 cap. There you go. Uh, 10 billion times a day, and you're good to go. I've got a cap. So it spins. Yeah. I'm giving it too much with the cap before I do the machine. I'm not getting. I'm the maximum, good. yeah. Well, I mean, that's just that's just speed belt. So. Yeah. Oh no, that's good. So it's kind of it seems like the same sort of thing uh, with everyone that's here. Yes. Is that every time I've talked to someone, they're doing a different job. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were the the label person. No, oh, no, 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 I, no, I do. No. We all wear we all very much wear different hats. There's only six of us full time. Yeah. Um. So. Lots of lots of stuff need to do more. There's more than six jobs that you're doing in any given day. So yeah, you mentioned uh, potentially expanding into games. So yes. transatlantic games, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the original intent. Yeah, there, I think there are games in the works. I wouldn't be able to tell you what they are because that's between like games designers and Bob. Um, and I probably I couldn't put it in the video anyway. No, probably no. not. <laughs> probably not. The building itself is pre World War Two. Like this came through, this building's been through the bombing of Liverpool in World War II yeah. and still standing. So it's done, done all right for itself. Uh, looking a bit worse for wear, but we'll get there with that one. When this building, when we first started the paints, um, this all down here was privateer, like shipping and picking. Right. So just imagine like rows of shelves like this, but privateer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So all, all back then, like, yeah, it was all fulfilled from here. Cause mm -hmm. It's just cheaper to send a massive pallet of miniatures yeah. here. Um, was that for all of Europe you distributed for as well? Or just, much, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of becoming that important again now in that the paints that you're manufacturing are just about to get their first mass shipment to the States. Is that yes, right? yeah, yeah. Asthma yeah. Day? With Asthma Day, yeah, yeah. Asthma Day in North America. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's weird because it's all going back the other way now. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. odd, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's nice that it's all sort of manufactured in the UK. I know that there's obviously other brands that do it in the UK. Yeah. And we're quite proud of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to uh, see. A centre for yeah. wargaming in the UK. Yeah. In general, like. Uh, it feels like an English pastime. I don't know yeah. what, what it, I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's maybe a warmonger in nature or something. <laughs> that's it. That's what I was getting. At. Yeah, colonial. Yeah. It always yeah. comes back to yeah. colonialism. That's, yeah. that's yeah. always colonialism. Got to keep a, got to keep your eye on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On to the last stage, labelling. We all need labels. As a child, I was labelled as lazy and slow-witted, and that absolutely helped me move forward in life, so there we go. Each bottle gets a label with its name, location in the Tooth & Coats triad, be it shade, mid or highlight, and then feeds through to the end to be ready to be picked and shipped to distributors. As mentioned earlier, Asthma Day have just picked up stateside distribution of the paint and thousands of bottles, maybe millions of bottles, I don't know, are making their way out there as we speak.
As for the paints themselves, what are they like? Well, myself and Josh from the Pickle Jar were in a very fortunate position to be the first people outside of Mr. Duncan Rhodes himself to actually try the brand new, successfully kickstarted Wave 2 of Two Thin Coats. But since I am not much of a painter's painter, I left an in-depth review of the new paints to Josh. So you can go and check out his video here, or in a link at the end of the video. He spent the entire day painting and getting to grips with the new stuff. It'd be rude, of course, for me not to take some samples and have a go myself. So I did. And yes, I like. I like very much. Yeah, I told you I wasn't much of a painter's painter. They coat well, they hold their pigment after dilution, they go on smooth, they dry smooth, the washes are good, the metallics are nice, and the brand new glazes are what we need more of in hobby paints. For goodness sake, somebody make some more glazes. I wanted to use as many of the Wave 2 paints as I could, hence the more saturated Masters of the Universe action figure style paint schemes that I've got going on here. But you know, good fun all around. And yep, you can rest assured the yellows and oranges, super decent, well done Transatlantis Games. Thank you for watching guys, and thank you to TAG who sent me away with some boxes of two thin coats to give away. And as always, a massive thank you to my patron community who, as we speak, seem to be getting hit with Stargrave fever and are making their fresh and funky new crews for it. So maybe I'll do something Stargravey this month. <laughs> Cheers, guys. I'm out of here. Right, Josh, where are you now? Have you had a nice day, my friend? I've had a lovely day. Have you had a nice day? I have had a nice day. I've learned all about how acrylic paint is made. I got to use some new paints as well. Did you? Yeah. Did you like the paints, Josh? I love the paints. They were great. Good. Did you like how the paints were bottled, babe? I liked how they were made. I even got to have a go on a little stamp fest. Did you? I did. Did you stamp a thing? I've learned a lot. I painted a thing. Anyway, we're going home now. Yeah. So, I'll see you I... later.